Hello, everyone, and welcome to another master class stream. It's Monday, so master class. This is those streams for those power users, those of you who like to step outside of the box with the tool and just kind of create your everyday kind of map. So that's very exciting. I've been looking forward to this one. I've been kind of hyping it up a lot too. So heraldry is, I think, in a fantasy setting, incredibly important. It goes far beyond just your um, noble houses, your princes, your kings, queens, those kind of stuff. Heraldry is something that you can use for a number of things. You can include heraldry for things like your guilds. So I've got like Thieves Guild, Assassin's Guild, these kind of things, all kinds of different guilds that you can create heraldry for. Um, you can also use heraldry uh, to create um, heraldry for your institutions. So like your city guard or your library church or your mages college, whatever it might be. There's a lot of different options. And then, of course, you can also use it to like make your like empires, which each race that you might have, depending on what they are, right? From human all the way to, you know, halflings, dark elves, or all that kind of stuff. So we're going to be showing you how to put together these kind of heraldry images with that pretty much the newly released fantasy world stuff. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, and I have the links to every single one of those um, here. Put them in the chat. I'll go ahead and just pin it at the top. And then you can go ahead and just... Um, click any of those links and you'll be able to clone and edit those for personal use. So a lot to kind of go with there. Let's go ahead and uh, go over the diagram real quick. We're going to go over the anatomy of heraldry so you can kind of get a um, feel on how to put this stuff together and how to how I do it. Hey, first time chatter, by the way. Glad that you are here. Awesome. So, all right, here we go. So you're going to see here that there's this diagram. And I pretty much found the diagram online and kind of replicated it within the tool. So I don't want to take credit for it. Um, but this is pretty much like a composition of like what heraldry kind of looks like. Uh, it's There's a lot more to it. We're not going to cover the historical stuff. We're going to cover more um, a fantasy element since the tool can't really support uh, more of the historical stuff with all the different charges and tinctures and all the colors and stuff. That's a lot. So maybe we can save that for another stream. This one will be focused more on fantasy. Hello, DD Danger. Glad that you're here. So on the diagram here, um, you're going to notice there is something called the bottom mantle. That's right. This thing right here is that bottom mantle. Think of it as like the base. It's what holds everything up, right? Right above that is that bottom banner. And usually the bottom banner has like the name of the royal house, whatever it might be. I came up with a name called Umberland, but it could be anything name that you want to come up with. After that comes the motto. That's generally like the motto of the house. So honor, glory, blood, or love, honor, war, whatever it is that you, you don't have to add the motto, but it's nice to put in there. It's, and it can be several ribbons that, or several of those banners kind of put together to create multiple phrases. I just did one banner, but you could use several. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Okay. And then above the motto, you're going to have what's called the shield. And this is what is traditionally referred to as like the coat of arms. Um, and then within the coat of arms, you have what are called divisions or quartering. When I say quartering, I don't mean actual quarters. Quartering means divisions. Um, divisions on a shield. You see that I have three spaces within that shield. You're saying, well, that's not quartering. Well, it is in a heraldic sense. It Usually it can be three or two pieces or six. It doesn't matter. So just when you think of quartering, don't take it literal. Think of it as divisions on the shield. And then within those divisions are what are called charges. So these symbols are what are called charges. And usually uh, the charges are like heraldic achievements. Those are things that the royal house or the institution or the guild has achieved during its um you know, it's history. So like I have a key here, you could say that maybe the reason why this royal house has a key is because they control the gatehouse of a of a capital city. So they're the key to get into the city. You could say there are three arrows here. Maybe you could say that there were three epic battles that took place uh, in the history and they led the charge and won all three of those. You could also say that there's, there's like a judicial kind of symbol here with the 
the weight and scale that can kind of represent like they've always been on the side of justice or they've been balanced in their decisions or whatnot. So or these are why you would have like these charges. They're like achievements that perhaps a lord or a liege or the main body get, you know, gave to this lord or liege uh, to kind of represent their achievements in their history. Next, you have these two things on the side. These are called shield supporters. And technically what these supporters are doing is just supporting the shield. Normally, in a historic sense, they would be holding the shield itself, though these icons don't have that. But you can just put them right next to them, and they don't have to be two of the same thing. One could be a griffin, as you can see here, and then another one could be like a unicorn or a snake or a horse or whatever, right? Now, above where the coats of arms is, where the charges of the shield, the divisions in the shield is, is going to be your top banner. Now, you don't have to have a top banner, but it could be a title. It could be um, a, the title of their rank. It could be a title like the Lord of Fire, or if it's a fantasy setting, right? The Lord and Liege of Ice, whatever it could be, right? So there's so many different options. Yes, by the way, first time chatter, this will be added to YouTube. So if you miss it, don't worry. We'll make sure it gets added on there, okay? So that's that top banner. And then above that, you're going to get into um, the top mantle. And think of that as just the base that holds up the helm, crown, and crest. Now, you don't need to add the crest, crown, and helm if it's, let's say, an institution or a guild, right? Because there's no crown needed. There's no royal crest needed because it's not a lord or liege. It's like an institution. But if it is, if you are making heraldry for a royal house then you would add the helm, the crown, and the crest. The helm is like a helmet. That's why it's called a helm. Then you have the crown that goes on top of the helm. And then you have the very top piece, which is called the crest. And that's what they call the family crest, right? Normally, some people kind of think like, oh, this is the crest. That's not the crest. The crest is at the top, and it's usually the symbol of the royal family or the the Lord of the Liege's house. So for here, you kind of have like, it could be a falcon or an eagle, some kind of majestic bird of prey and a crown that floats above it. So the great thing about doing heraldry is that you don't have to have every single one of these elements. You could just have the shield and one shield supporter. That's it. Or you could have the bottom mantle, the shield, and then uh, maybe just the modern. So the great thing is that you don't have to follow every single one of these elements when you're making your heraldry. It's just it's just a diagram to kind of get you familiar. And you can add even more elements than you see here. There's a lot more to it. Um, if you want more history and stuff, definitely you should go on YouTube and look up the history of the heraldry. But again, for the purpose of the video, it's mostly fantasy here. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out. I kind of gave you an idea of how the heraldry works. Why don't we create um, a new map? And then what I'm gonna have people, all what I'll do is I'll first create um one coat of arms or one piece of heraldry just to show you how i piece it together and then i'm going to have people who are watching um kind of give me a prompt think of me as like an ai okay you give me a prompt and i will create that heraldry my only request is that your requests for the heraldry are not off like kind of a f obscure family name or something make sure that it's like a, a guild a race um, or an empire or institution, something like that. So I don't mind if you make suggestions, just make sure that they're not something obscure because remember the limitations of the tool and I won't know what to make if you don't give me some kind of theme. So while I'm putting this together, people in the chat, feel free to give me your requests on what you want me to make and I'll show you how to put these things together. So we'll create a new map. It's, a, it's all under the fantasy world. You'll see the new sim word there. So if it new, we're going to stick with just the regular landscape. And in fact, I'm going to keep the same um, settings, I think, as these. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and clone this. I'm just going to call this stream heraldry. Heraldry you. <laughs> okay. And then I'll put together one piece of heraldry. And then you guys are going to give me your suggestions. This stuff is so easy to put together. You just kind of follow that format that I had there and then just pick and choose what elements from that diagram that I provided. And if you're wondering where the links to all these things are, they're up at the top. They're pinned at the top of the chat. So if you're kind of wondering like, well, hey, how do I get access to these? 
You totally can check that, okay? Okay, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these. And I'm going to have people go ahead and just give me suggestions on what you want me to make. And for now, I'm just going to make something pretty simple. Um, let's just stick with like a royal, a royal house. So a noble family. That's what we're going to make first. So here's a noble family. Now, when I make this heraldry stuff, I generally use, um, you'll notice that a lot of the stuff kind of has a white shadow on it. So if I go into the heraldry here, you'll notice that this banner right here has a white shadow on it. That's okay, but some stamps don't have white shadows. So you see the kind of difference. The way that I kind of counteract that clash in style is by just adding a white layer shadow. So when I go to click this right here, and then I go to advanced settings and just go to shadow, I click layer. And I've already made a white glowing layer shadow. And then that way, when I stack things on top of each other, there'll always be a white layer shadow covering the outline of all the stamps. So that's kind of how I deal with that kind of the inconsistency with some of the stamp line, line work and that little shadow there. So kind of a nice little trick. And so we'll stick with a noble family for now. And what I generally do first is I'll choose a shield. So if you go into heraldry in that left part of the catalog, and I go to expand all so I can kind of see all the options that I'm working with. And we'll work with other items, other stamps besides just the heraldry pack here. And we might even go into um, another style to borrow some stamps because sometimes you don't have what you're looking for um, in the style itself. So what I'll do is I'll always pick a shield first and then I can start building around the shield. So I'll pick maybe for now, um, let's see here. Let's go with a red one. Let's pick this shield. I like this one right here. So I'll pick a shield. I'm going to put it the largest size just so that you can kind of see it better because if I put it all the way down to 100%, it's quite small. So we'll scale it up all the way, make it nice and big. Whenever I'm making compositions like this, heraldry or whatever, I scale things up quite a bit so that I can work with it. It's a lot easier than having to zoom way in and work with these small sizes. Just scale it up. That way it's just easier to work with. Now we have the shield. We also want to maybe add a bottom mantle. That's fine. Since we're sticking with the red, let's stick with these uh, modular pieces, the red ones. And I'll make sure to put these right along the side of the shield. Just go to flip the option here and put another one right there. And now if you're wondering how is it that I kind of decide uh, to make sure that things are lined up, if you don't have a very good eye for uh, lining things up, you can always use your grid, and there's also this great option where you can just go into the uh, hamburger menu, and then just go to a line, and just center uh, vertically, and they'll notice that these two pieces are now all signed, put together vertically. I can do the same thing here. Just select all of it, center vertically, and now they're all kind of centered uh, vertically there. All right, so I've added some of these kind of pieces on the side. I can keep adding maybe some more. Let's add... Um, Maybe some more decoration at the bottom here. Let's push them above maybe the shield. Put them down right here. I'm going to flip it, put another one right here. So you're kind of getting the general idea. I'm kind of piecing these together. So you kind of have this mantle, this piece here. Let's go add um, an up something to the upper mantle, the top mantle. Put that up there. I think that looks good. Let's go with that. Maybe I want to say this is some kind of royal family or something. Let's let's. let's we don't have a helmet, but we can use a shield, flip it upside down, and just kind of use that as our helmet. And then we'll put uh, we'll put the crown on top of that. So we'll push it up a layer on top. So now you have the crown on top of there. That's good. And then we maybe want to put a crest there as well. And the crest could be anything. Let's do this eagle right here. I think this looks nice. So we'll go and put this eagle right here. And remember what I said, you select all this stuff and then just go to shadow, layer shadow, and then there you go. And when you select it, the layer shadow will get disabled. It's once you let it go 
it'll come back on. So you have those elements right there. And the next, we're going to want to throw in maybe a banner. And you can choose whichever banner you want. Let's say that you have a long name for the royal house. You got this double here, this fancy one right here. Just make sure that it goes above. I want to make sure that it goes above it right here. Maybe you want to have it this way instead. It's up to you. Just pick that banner. Again, make sure it's set to that layer. You don't have to do them all, do them individually. You can select everything and do layer. It's up to you. Okay. So we've got that banner there. We've got this there. Let's throw on um, something at the bottom as kind of a decoration. I'm just going to take this crown right here and just kind of put it at the bottom. The layer shadow. There we go. Let's go turn that uh, grid off. There you go. So you can kind of see how it's kind of put together. This noble family. Now let's take care of the charges that are going to be on the shield. Now there isn't a lot of different symbol options. So if the historical, there's usually a varying amount of charges and tinctures or colors. But in fantasy, you can have one or two items. It's up to you. Um, so you could put, a, a sing, if you wanted a single item, you can just put like a key. Like right here, just make sure it's above a layer. If you don't like the key, you can maybe put like a demon symbol right here. Maybe they're known for being the demon king, right? So you could put a that symbol there, or maybe they're known for being rather judicious. So you can put that there. And you can put multiple ones as well. You could put one on this side, and then maybe another one on this side if you wanted to. So that would be your division, what's called your divisions. If you felt like you wanted more divisions, you could just use a line shape right here and just kind of split the division there and just push this up a layer. There you go. And then now you would have your divisions on either side. You could do that. It's up to you, really. So, I mean, with the fantasy elements, I usually just pick one symbol, but you can have multiple if you wanted to. And then we'll go, I'll show you how to kind of put together, um, I'll show you how to make the inside of the shield a different color so that that way the icon that you're using for the charges will kind of pop out more. So we'll just kind of make sure that everything is selected, layer shadow, and then create group. And we're just going to call it noble family. So you kind of get the general idea on how I put it together. You start with your shield, you kind of put together the mantles, that banner, then you can work with the top mantle, your helmet, your cre your crown, your crest, and then the charges that are going to be on the shield. So it's not very complex to kind of put these together. It's pretty easy stuff. Not complex. So if anyone has some suggestions for some, feel free to hand them over. I'll kind of put together um, some other ones while you guys kind of figure that out. Just let me know if there's anything that interests you, like uh, an orc. Maybe there's an orc noble family, or if there's um, an institution, whatever it might be. So just let me know if you're out there. Please mention in the chat what you want me to make, and I will. So we'll go ahead and push that over to here. It's a pretty simple stuff. Let's make, like, um, someone's got a suggestion in here. Yeah, more charges would be awesome. I totally agree with that. But maybe in another update. So I'm looking forward to that if they if they decide to proceed. All right, so no one's got any suggestions. So I'll just kind of make a guild then. Um, and I think I'll make a, um, a thieves guild. And then while I'm kind of putting these together. So this is a guild. It's not going to have like a noble family or anything. So we'll focus maybe on something a bit um, different. So let's create something let's do something a little bit different than this kind of setup let's have it to where um there's maybe a, a shield supporter a flag maybe um a symbol a charge on the flag and then maybe like a mantle or something so let's start with that so what i'll do is i'll maybe choose like a creature or something that i want to use when i think of thieves i think of like maybe like wolves or something so we can go with decorations and in the decorations, you have um, some creatures. So you could use, there's a wolf right here. I think this will work out just fine. And we're going to change it up to where it's like a black wolf. We'll start with the wolf first. Next, we'll create like a shield or um, a flag. And what I'll use is this right here is just a scale 
for how many miles are on your map, but I'm going to use it as a pole because I'm trying to stick within the fantasy world style. And so I'll go ahead and just put that right there, make it look like maybe they're holding it or they're right next to it. And then I'll go ahead and choose a banner that I want. Uh, not that one. This one, maybe that one. Let's keep looking. We'll keep looking for other banners. We'll see what works best. Uh, oh, this one looks good right here. Let's use this one. Cool. And you know what? I'll make the um, I'll make this straight first, and then we can kind of rotate it. So we're going to put this on top of there. And I'm going to make it black as well. And then I might make this a bit, might transform this just a little bit to make it a little bit thinner. And then I think I'm going to put some more wolves in here. Let's put one in the back, one up here, copy, paste, and then let's put one behind to create the sense of depth. So I think three wolves looks good. Let's also just expand this a little bit more. There we go. Oh, make this a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. There we go. Okay. And then let's go put um, a symbol on there. Uh, let's put a snake. I think a snake might be good. Put a snake right on there. Um, and I don't think I'll use a color. Instead, what I'll do is I'll just change the contrast to pure white. And then just put that and that black and white will kind of pop out more. And then if you want, you can put like a mantle underneath it. So you could uh, you could use a banner as a mantle. That would work fine. Let's see here. Let's type in banner here. Let's see what options we have. Oh, there's a longer one right here. That works fine. Go ahead and rotate that and just put it underneath. And I think I'll make this white. Just stick with the black and white kind of feel to it. And then we'll turn this black and white as well. Actually, I kind of like that brownish color. That was kind of nice. And then I'll select everything, layer shadow. And now you kind of have this Thieves Guild right here, where I didn't use um, all these different shield supporters and helmets. I didn't use all that stuff, but there's the symbols, right? You've got the three wolves. Maybe that represents the three founders of the Thieves Guild. You have a snake on the banner there. Maybe that's because they're known for their, their cunning, you know? So it could be a lot of different things. So I think this actually just looks kind of fun right here. I kind of like this one. So I'll just create a group and we'll call it Thieves Guild. Okay. All right. I hope you guys get the general idea on kind of putting them together, right? It's not complex. It's pretty easy stuff. Just kind of follow that formula and then just add and remove what you want and don't want. Um, Okay, so we have that Thieves Guild here, and we'll kind of move this out of the way. I'm going to actually scale these down. Make them nice and small. And we can put them in the corner there. Oh, wait, someone had an idea. We got a noble family that represents a sea serpent. Yeah, that sounds great. I like that. Yay, someone made a suggestion. I like to see that. <laughs> okay. A sea serpent sounds awesome. Love that. So let's do that. Okay. Let's do, um, I, you know, I kind of like this format right here of this Thieves Guild right here. So let's maybe do, um, let's see here. We'll call it Salt. We're going to call this uh, House of Salt. Salt. If they worship a sea creature, then they are close to the sea. And they're going to need a family name, so we'll call them the House of Salt. Okay, and when you pick the theme, that kind of helps to kind of figure out, you know, what kind of colors you're working with. If it's by the sea, maybe blue is a good choice for the shield, right? So we can choose like a blue shield. That probably will work out nicely. Um, someone mentioned a sea serpent, so we should throw that in there. They're in decorations. There should be some monsters in there. Um, this one right here might work. Or this one might work. You can both of them work kind of just fine. You just place this right here behind the shield. Um, you can put two of them if you wanted to. You could flip it like this and then put another one in here, right here. So you had two, two of them. We'll push it down a layer. 
There you go. And we'll even change the U on this to kind of fit more to that blue color. What I'll generally do is boost the saturation all the way up. So that way it's kind of easier to see the color that I'm working with. And I think that's the kind of blue that we're working with. And I think even this might even work better for something for the side here like this. Let's put them to the side. There we go. I like that better. So you have like these sea serpents coming out of the side. I like that. That works good. Um, let's see here. I think if it's going to be a sea house, um, house by the sea, then maybe we want to add something like a ship. Kind of makes sense. So we'll throw in a ship. Put that on there. And we might even change the scale, change the hue a little bit to this. Uh, no, I think the original color is fine. Let's just go with that. So we'll go ahead and put that there, push it up a layer so it's on top. There you go. Um, there's other elements too that we can add. Since it's sort of the sea, we think of like Poseidon's trident. So maybe put that at the top here. And we'll line it up with the shield. Okay. And then um, we could add more to the mantle, I think would be a good idea. Let's uh, take this one right here again. We'll boost that saturation up, try to find that nice blue color. And let's see here, where do we want to put it? It could go right here. Let's put it at the top part of the mantle and then we'll put a banner down and then we'll see if we can maybe play with that color as well. Yeah, okay. So there are the sea creatures. We've got the boat, we've got a trident, all kind of fits within um, that theme. We might want to put like a banner down. Let's see here, we've used one of those, one of those. Let's try a different banner, something different than the ones we've already used. Uh, we've used that one, let's uh, use this one maybe. And let's push it up. I think this color is okay. I mean, you could change the U to a bluish color if you want, or you can um, completely desaturate it um, to where it's like a white color. And you can kind of just boost the brightness a little bit up this way if you wanted to do it that way. You can do that. And I kind of like the asymmetry of this, where the banner kind of goes off to the side. Kind of reminds me of like the front of a ship almost. So I kind of like the asymmetry there. I sometimes, you know, a lot of heraldry looks the same when you have them all really, really symmetrical. That's why this one right here, this Thieves Guild heraldry, pops out more than um, this kind of heraldry right here because it's just so symmetrical. It all has the same elements on either side. This one doesn't have that. So it's kind of a pro tip there that sometimes your heraldry that really pops out more is very asymmetrical. It has these three wolves facing in a different direction. They're sitting on top of a banner, standing on top of a banner. I think those kind of um, stick out more. It's just kind of a rule of thumb as an artist all around when you're putting your compositions that um, asymmetry generally just pops out more. So just kind of remember that. So we'll go ahead and take this, we're going to bring the uh, shadows back to layer shadows, so everything's layer shadows. Um, there's even some fun things you can do, I think, with, um, let's see here, I think there's some waves. Like, you could use these as well. You'll see there's some waves here, and I think these also work um, fine. You could put these, like, right here, put them in the front, so it kind of looks like there's a turbulent sea, and just copy paste flip it like this and then you can put the other one right here or you can flip them facing this way it's up to you really there's a lot of different ways you can do it i think it might work a little better this way because it kind of looks like um they're coming out of the the ocean right there and i kind of like that and then you can kind of add in um L or L other elements to it as well you can push that there we could use let's see oh here we go this looks good We'll use this right here to kind of complete this. So we'll go like that. There we go. Okay. And we'll put another one right here. Just kind of push it out. Just to kind of give it some more interesting design work. There you go. So a lot of different ways that you can kind of go about um, doing it. Pretty interesting stuff. And then if you want, you could say... Um, we could use, like, let's say... <sighs> You wanted to uh, show like ocean mist, so we could kind of put some of these clouds down here at the bottom to kind of make it look like 
there's some ocean mist and it kind of works i think fairly well as kind of a top kind of a bottom mantle push this over here like that there we go okay and so now you have kind of the mantle piece with the sea foam so you have this nice kind of crest there so we'll go back to layer shadow we're going to create group okay um house of salt um one thing i noticed that we didn't add in there was a banner as well we can quickly add in a banner um let's do uh, a fancier one Oh, there's some cool stuff right here. I like this one. This one's kind of cool. So, so this right here, that's kind of cool. You could put the... Oops. Oh, I just noticed that those things are set to layer 5. So let's go put these bottom right here. And I think this yellow works well with the yellow of the frame that kind of goes around the shield there. So I think that kind of works out well. And then I'll just make sure to group all that. Create group. There you go. Okay. So now you have the House of Salt done. You guys are getting the idea. Not complex, super easy stuff to make these super fun. Um, just the trick to it is to know, is to pick a theme. You have to have a theme when you're putting together um, heraldic imagery, right? You need to know the history of the family or the guild or the institution. And that's gonna help to decide the, comp the elements that you're going to put into the composition. Like Nimue had posted in the chat there, there were, we're doing sea creatures, so the ocean, so expect blue. Um, yellow kind of complements blue, so that, that yellowish, orangish color, even those browns, those warmer colors, help to pop out because you have those cooler colors. So kind of remember contrasting between warm and cool colors to allow things to kind of pop out. It's called contrast. So it's super helpful. So there's a lot of different things that you can do. Does anyone else have any suggestions that I missed one? Um, order of the hand. Oh, yeah. Might as well be fun to try. Yeah. I mean, now we don't, there isn't a hand in, um, there isn't a hand in the icon. So you'd have to make your own. Um, we could make one. I mean, this is a master class. So we could make one. It wouldn't be too complex. We can probably just use the line tool uh, to create that. So let's go put that together. So it was called, let's see here, um, order of the hand. Okay, let's 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 do that. One second while I write this out. Order of the hand. Where are we at for time? Oh, cool. Tons of time. We'll do maybe one or two more. Order of the hand. Okay. All right. Sweet. Love that idea, by the way. Order of the hand. Very cool. So we'll go ahead and put that down. Let's do something different than the symmetry stuff. You notice that we did a symmetry here and here. So let's do one that's um, not symmetrical. Uh, let's do an asymmetrical one that should be more interesting. Um, let's go put in um, a creature. I'm going to decorations. And I kind of feel like a unicorn might be good. We'll kind of use this. They're going to be kind of like similar to this thing right here. We're going to put a a banner and a flag and all that stuff there. So we'll put that there. So we'll put that there. Um, we'll go put another one of these down. I'm going to mess with that. Excuse me, the transform. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to put it like right where the hands are. So it kind of looks like they're kind of holding it a little bit. The thing is, is that I'm kind of competing with the unicorn horn there. So I don't want to do that too much. So I'll go ahead and put that there. And then we'll choose um, a banner that we want. And then we'll put the symbol of a hand on there or a fist. It could be a hand or a fist. Um, I think there's some symbols in parchment for uh, a fist. But I'm thinking more specifically, Red Eye Eagle Games, you want like an open hand, like a palm. Let me know if that's correct. A palm or like an open hand or like a closed fist. Which symbol do you think looks better? And we can kind of decide whether or not how to how to go about making that. Okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and choose a banner that we want. Or you can even choose um, something from Heraldry. Palm was more... Okay, sure. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, first, let's go ahead and put everything together. Um, and let's do something different. Let's use maybe one of these flags right here. I kind of like this one right here. 
kind of kind of a cool thing here. What I'll do is I'll stretch it so it's a little bit longer. And what I think I'll do is desaturate it as well. We'll bring the brightness up. And we're going to put this down right here. There we go. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll put a hand on that on that banner. Let's transform a little bit more, make it a little bit thicker. And then also we'll put something, um, we'll put maybe some kind of spear-like thing at the top. Kind of make it look more interesting. So we'll kind of throw this sword right here and I'll make it look like it's the top of like the standard. There you go. So you have the shield right there. It's a little on the long side. Let's go with bringing it down a little bit smaller. Just don't want it to be super huge. Um, yeah, let's bring it down a little bit more. It's a little too big. We'll change the transform. There we go. Bring it down a little bit more. I think that will probably look... Well, yeah. Let's go with this. This should be fine. I'll scale it up a little bit. There we go. Okay. And then I think I'll have them running on a, maybe running on a cloud. There we go. Oh, let's flip the cloud around. Face it this way. I think that'll work better. Okay. And then we want to make sure that we get that palm in there. So a couple of ways we can go about doing this is you can just make it with the path tool. This is a master class. So we'll kind of go over, go over that. Let's just first pick a path. We're going to edit it live change it to where it's just normal and i think i'll just have the hand be black i'm not going to worry about making it um with a hand we're going to start with this since it's a really small symbol we'll start with the palm I'm just going to use a simple ball for the palm and then we'll create each kind of finger and i don't know we might have to scale it up a little bit more so that it kind of fits i want to create like a crease or create some kind of space in between the fingers. So we have this open palm here. Oh. Okay. Eh, not my favorite hand. <laughs> create group. Oh, we want to make sure we push it up a layer. There we go. So we kind of have a hand symbol here and we can add more ornamentation to it so it doesn't look quite as funky. So you can always go into these symbols right here. And because I made that black, we'll do the same thing. And the black will pop out against the white that I've chosen here because um, it's just contrast. So we can add a palm with the hand and then these kind of supports on the side that at least give it a kind of a unique look to it. Okay, there we go. And then last but not least, you'd want to throw in some kind of uh, banner in here. And we can maybe try something we haven't used. Let's go with uh, maybe this one right here. It's a little bit different. Oops, I see, you gotta push it up. Let's go push this down. Okay, um, I'm almost tempted to have Let's see here. I want to figure out, maybe I want to change the color of the banner. I could have it be black. We could do that. Just bring the brightness down quite a bit. Or we could change the color of it. I'm not so sure. I kind of think yellow and white should work out good. Kind of give it a gold feel to it. Okay. And then we'll just select everything besides this, obviously. And then we can go shadow, layer shadow. There we go. Okay. And then we'll create group order of the hand. There we go. Cool. Oh, oh order of the mind. Oh, did someone say mind or hand? Oh, my bad. <laughs> I said, or I see order of the hand right here. <laughs> Oops. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and just push this over. Where are we at for time here? 39. Oh, I think we're all, we're pretty much close to done. We can do one more. If anyone else has some ideas, let me know. I like that one quite a bit. The yellow goes well with the white, in my opinion. So I kind of like that one. <laughs> anyone else have any suggestions? I like that one. Um, we got 15 people here right now. Is there anyone have another idea? If not, then we can kind of call it good because I think you guys got the general idea on kind of how to put these 
um, together. It's pretty simple stuff. Just follow that formula. Remember all the links are at the top. You've got the heraldry diagram, the institutions, the races, the guilds, and I'll probably be making um, I'll probably be making more heraldry stuff uh, maybe later this week um, for more than just guilds, maybe some different royal house ones. So we'll see. And I think uh, maybe in the future for another master class uh, we could do something a little more I mean complex. Oh, you know what? There is one thing I wanted to show uh, real quick, and that was how to put in the divisions. I didn't really show that part. So let me kind of go over that real quick. And I'll show you a really cool trick on how to put together uh, the shield. So what I'll do is I'll turn a stroke off and I'll choose a fill and choose a texture. And what I normally do is choose like a lighter texture, like white or black, because they're neutral colors. The symbol that's gonna go on them, the charges that's gonna go on them are going to pop out more. So what you do is use the pen and you only need to do half of the shield. So I'll show you a neat little trick. You'll go ahead and put together the pen, follow just the outline of the shield, and then press enter plus. And then what you'll do is you'll just copy paste that. You're going to flip it. Put it together right here like this. Make sure they're nice and lined together. And then once you've done that, then make sure you're set to merge shape and then just create a shape in between the both of them. And now that shape will merge into one shape. You can also add in that stroke if you want to make sure that there is a heavy stroke line right here. And then you can change whatever color of the shield that you want it to be. You want it to be this color. You want it to be that color, you want it to be white, you want it to be a darker color, the browns. That's the beautiful thing is you can change the shield color truthfully by just following that method. And the thing is, is that if you try to make the whole inner shield shape, um, the whole thing, you might make mistakes with the different um, nodules. So instead, again, only make half of it, then flip and then merge those two together by dragging one over the two of them and then merge them together. And then you can do whatever shape you want. And what's cool is, is that you can go into fantasy battle maps and there's some like carpets and rugs and stuff um, that work great, by the way, for shields. So right here you have this, um, let's see here, what's it called? Um, the blue and yellow carpet and the red and yellow carpet. These work great for your shield. So you can add in these kind of fleur-de-lis kind of shapes in there that are kind of nice. You can even use like these kind of symbols as well. So fantasy battle maps, you can play around with carpets and also other things work as well. You could use this shape, use this texture right here to kind of represent, you know, let's say you're the guard of the set of the, of a giant wall. Um, they're the guards that protect the giant wall that protects this city from the desert. And so you have this sandstone brick wall as a background, and then you can put your sh your charges on top of that or your divisions on top of that. So kind of remember that trick to use the shape tool to create um, different colors because you're kind of limited with the shield. You can sure you can change the U, but it kind of looks kind of odd with the line work and stuff. So instead you can just desaturate it and then that way there's that metal gray color and then you can put whatever texture that you want to be on top of it. And there's some interesting textures that you can use. Like even that right there kind of looks like, uh, you know, maybe uh, heraldic charges right there. Same thing, you could use um, this one right here. You see, so you can use all kinds of things to kind of create um, that. So I think that's kind of a unique thing that you can kind of do. You can use all these various textures to kind of create whatever the heck you want. So kind of a cool little trick there. Just kind of remember that. And you can do a lot with that. Very, 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 very useful, in my opinion. There's probably a bunch in here. Uh, you want like an ocean scene in the background. Remember, it's fantasy. So you can put on like this ocean scene and maybe you want to put like a ship on top of that. Or if you wanted to have like some kind of guild, um, an artificer's guild. So then you had these gears in the background, right? Or if you wanted to have 
let's see there's so many different options that you can do here you could go to like fantasy regional and choose whatever you want here like a lava background maybe you have like a fire lord or something so kind of a neat trick just remember it works with just about any shield really we'll do it more let's do it like an, another shield like this one right here i guess might be more complex because the shield um you're gonna probably gonna have to use uh, the pen all the way in my opinion probably here so because the shield is asymmetrical so you would have to go in here and then do all these little points so kind of a nice little trick there because sometimes again the shields are limited in the kind of colors of what they call tinctures in the historical sense there you go click 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 and remember when it comes to curves if you want more curves you have to create more nodules so that's the trick with that shape tool more nodules so i go ahead and place that down and then you have the inside of the shield and you have that again that outline which kind of helps to make it look like it's supposed to be a part of the shield and you can change it to whatever texture that you want it to be that's the kind of the beauty of it so just kind of remember that trick when you're putting together your your heraldry okay well hey i think that's it for the stream um you know go join our discord if you haven't um i am there so many incredible incre incredibly creative people are there join the discord a lot of helpful people there I, i'm there too if you can always ping me if you need help for putting things together um, if you liked this stream, definitely give it a thumbs up on YouTube so that I know what kind, that this is the kind of content that you want to see. Um, and then also, you definitely can let us know if there are, if you have any suggestions for future master classes or just regular streams that we have on Wednesday. Uh, the Wednesday stream we have coming up is how to make small castles. I'll be making a small castle builder where I'll be making a series of castle buildings that you see in a castle, and then you'll be able to put them together and then ring them together with a wall. So it's kind of, think of it as like a fast and easy castle builder, but it's gonna be small castles. I'm just gonna show you how to make a small castle and then we'll show you how to make bigger ones. Cause it's always best if you're not familiar with castle composition to make small ones first. And then once you get the idea on how castle fortifications and all the buildings work, then you can start making bigger ones. Okay, so next, this Wednesday, how to make small castles, fantasy, or um, it's going to be fantasy battle maps. All right. Hey, thank you so much, everyone. I had a great time making this stuff with you. I will see you all Wednesday, hopefully. And I don't know what our next master class will be. So if people have suggestions, go to our canny site and go uh, leave a request for what kind of master class sessions you want to see. There's so much stuff you can do with the tool. So just let us know what you want. All right. All right, thank you so much, everyone. Please take care and merry map making, everyone. Avita Zane.